Here's what's happening now. Plenty of heat out there and definitely the humidity, but we won't see some relief for quite a while. We'll check out when that is coming up. Extreme stress and anxiety on this first day of college and university for so many students. But not only is there an app for that, but we've got a little bit of new parenting 101. Also taking action, Native Americans protesting a North Dakota project that they say will destroy burial sites. How Michigan tribes are getting involved. And ever wanted six-pack abs? Well, we will tell you about the latest weight loss craze sweeping Hollywood, how you can lose fat without going under the knife. I'm Karen Drew. First at Four starts now. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. First and four, two people, including the so-called ringleader, have learned their fate for their roles in the DPS bribery scandal. The first to receive their sentence was businessman Norman Shy. Shy had pled guilty to billing DPS for nearly $3 million in school supplies that were never delivered. He conducted his scam by paying kickbacks to 13 DPS school principals and officials. Today, Shy was sentenced to five years in prison for his actions. Clara Flowers, a former assistant superintendent, was also sentenced today for her role in that scandal. Flowers accepted more than $300,000 from Shy and approved invoices for those same school supplies that were never delivered. Flowers pled guilty and will now serve three years in federal prison. In the meantime, Detroit Police Chief James Craig addressed the weekend violence today. At the news conference, Chief Craig expressed sorrow for the events of this past weekend, but spent a majority of the time explaining that this has been a positive year for Detroit, and overall, violence has decreased heavily throughout the city. We're still, in, in terms of overall crime, we are still trending downward. Uh, and again, I'm not waving a flag of success, but progress, absolutely. Chief Greg went on to say Detroit police and the Greenlight Initiative are most to thank for that decrease in crime and that the city's confidence in the police goes a long way in making things easier for police officers. ITT Tech is closing its doors today for good after nearly 50 years. The for-profit college announced it's shutting down all of its campuses nationwide, including five in Michigan. ITT Tech says it was forced to close after being told by the U.S. Department of Education it could no longer enroll students who use federal aid. Now, more than 8,000 employees are going to be laid off. The remaining faculty will help students look for new schooling. Time now for our first look at the forecast. Oh, Ben, it was a hot one for the kids on their first day back at school. Ooh, this does not feel like September, Karen. Temperatures, even though just struggling to hit 90 degrees right now in Ann Arbor, the rest of us in the upper 80s, look at these heat index numbers. 97 at Metro, Ann Arbor at 97. Even down in Adrian, heat index 95. That's where we did see a scattered shower earlier this afternoon. That has since fizzled, and right now we don't have anything else on the radar. Just a slight chance that we could see one pop up as we head later into the evening hours tonight. Otherwise, another smoldering finish tomorrow. Scattered thunderstorms, a little bit of a better bet as we get into Wednesday and especially Thursday, and not quite as hot as we head towards this weekend. So we'll look at the relief in the seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes, plus your four zone outlook, and you'll find out just how hot it's going to feel with those heat index readings tomorrow. All coming up in a few minutes. Karen. We need that relief. Thank you, Ben. First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world on your Tuesday afternoon. A Minnesota man is confessing to kidnapping and killing an 11-year-old boy who disappeared nearly 27 years ago. Authorities say Danny Heinrich made the admission today while he pled guilty to child pornography charges. An anonymous official says Heinrich led authorities to Wetterling's remains last week. Heinrich says he kidnapped Wetterling near his home back in October of 1989. Well, it is a milestone no city wants to achieve, but today the city of Chicago announced it has reached its 500th homicide of the year. Now, this comes after a total of 65 people were shot in Chicago over Labor Day weekend. 13 people were shot to death, and as the holiday drew to a close, the shootings didn't stop, with 31 of the 65 being wounded between 6 a.m. on Monday and 3 a.m. today. Chicago police attribute the shootings to retaliation, gangs, and some tense encounters. Labor Day weekend is the deadliest holiday weekend for Chicago this summer.
Right now, President Obama is on a historic visit to southern Asian country of Laos. He arrived there late Monday. Now, it makes him the first sitting U.S. president to visit the small country, which was bombed heavily during Vietnam. Today, President Obama announced the U.S. would spend $90 million to clear out millions of bombs in Laos that did not explode. Federal court is holding a hearing this afternoon on a motion by a North Dakota Indian tribe to stop work on an oil pipeline project. Kimberly Gill is live in the newsroom with the latest on the story, including a weekend confrontation that turned violent. Karen did. Good afternoon to you. The key players here are the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, the oil pipeline firm Energy Transfer Partners, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The tribe says the pipeline project will destroy burial grounds and other sacred sites, and they want to stop it. Now, the Dakota Access Pipeline would cross North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Illinois. The tribe has gone to federal court to stop construction. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it won't oppose a halt to work to let the courts resolve this matter. Protesters have clashed with pipeline security guards. They say six people were injured when the guards used dogs and pepper spray against them. I think there were construction trucks that were that came up also. They were spraying the pro protesters. I don't know why, but they were. But, and they also had canine dogs and a pit bull. It just happened real fast, like, you know, just quick. Now, local law enforcement officials say four security guards and two guard dogs needed medical treatment after the Saturday clash with protesters. Protest organizers placed a photo on Facebook showing what they claim is one of the guard dogs that bit protesters. They say blood from one of the protesters can be seen on the mouth of that dog. At least one Michigan delegation of Native Americans, the Gun Lake Tribe, has sent representatives to join in the protest. At the same time, the U.S. Office of Amnesty International has observers on the scene and is calling for state and local authorities to protect the right of peaceful protests in North Dakota. Karen. All right. Thank you. Kimberly Gill live in the newsroom. Well, extreme stress and anxiety on the first day of college and university for so many young adults. Our Paula Tutman is live in Ann Arbor this afternoon with a look at how students are coping with some really big changes, Paula. You know what, Karen, for a lot of these students, particularly freshmen, this is their first time away from home. The first time they're kind of adults on their own. And so this week, particularly on University of Michigan campus and college campuses all over the state, this is the most stressful time of the year. But guess what? Help is right here at your fingertips. First day of classes for students at the University of Michigan. It's a big school with a big price tag, the second highest in the state. Jared Davidson is a transfer junior, and he's got a few things mounting. Start with an estimate of what he will owe by the time he's a senior. Probably like 25 grand. But there's something else going on as students enter the first true phase of adulthood fear of failure. And more and more students, fresh from the arms of their parents, are being delivered into a world of, you better do well. It's just, there's even more pressure just all around and it's just it's kind of indescribable sometimes just the amount of pressure students feel logan pratt a senior from detroit feels immense pressure as he prepares to graduate it's just it's just more there's more to consider there's more to do there's more you have to do honestly to be considered excellent shannon Harmon from south lion has never really ever been away from home now her parents are footing the tuition bill but she knows she has to do her part I'm really nervous about failing and stuff. The University of Michigan takes student stress very, very seriously, and they make it easy for students not to go it alone. The one message that our office really tries to promote, especially this time of year, is for each student, because it's different for all of us, but each student to individually find that sweet spot of being able to perform really well academically and also take care of yourself. And there's an app for that, Stress Busters Wellness, so students have resources at their fingertips. Some short videos, some pictures, links to other uh, offices on campus. So you just push here and then say call and you'll be connected. At the end of the day, perhaps the best advice comes from students themselves and what you would call college kid parenting 101, that the biggest pressure comes from wanting to please the parents. And so parents, perhaps, back off. A bit. I'm fortunate to have parents who respect like growth as a process and they want me to be stimulated instead of you know they don't judge my success off of like GPA or like if I get a job that has a good salary.
Okay, so I really want you to take a look at this screen. I wanted you to see what this app looks like because it's not just for University of Michigan students. It is geared towards students, but anybody can actually download it. And in fact, here on the campus of University of Michigan, if you download the app and go to the Starbucks in the Student Union Center, show them the app and you can actually get a free coffee. Now, I also want to go back to that whole idea of tuition, Karen. It's really, really serious. And, and there's a new snapshot on what it costs to get a Michigan college or university uh, tuition or what, what that's actually going to cost. Join us at 6 o'clock. We take a look at that. But here's your warning. Don't watch this report by yourself. Uh-oh. It's scary. It is. Karen? I know. There's so much that they're dealing with paying for college and then just hoping they're going to be able to find a job. We will look forward to your report tonight at 6. Thank you, Paula. And ahead, first at four, Beyonce making some headlines, but it's not about what she's doing, it's about what she can't do. We'll tell you why some fans are pretty disappointed. Plus, an amazing mom, what this mother did that has many praising her parenting. And battling the bulge, how you can lose fat without going under the knife. Next. The Doctor. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. First day back to school, the kids are all excited. I think they're excited. Are you excited? You good? Yeah, right. One nod. <laughs> We're going to talk more about the changes in the classroom and why everybody, especially the teachers, are looking forward to this year. You know, Nick was smart when he shot that. He was inside, hopefully with air conditioning. Yes. Could you imagine if uh, the playground today? Oh, that oh, asphalt. it would have been a sweaty mess. I still remember <laughs> the smell of that hot asphalt on recess. It did kind of get exciting. You like bounce that kickball and it kind of sticks. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they're going to have to go through a couple days like yeah, it's this. That's going to be tough. This week, look at these numbers out there right now. They're close to 90 degrees in a lot of spots. That's the air temperature. Then you factor the humidity on top of this, and here's how it actually feels out there. 100 in Mount Clemens. I'm matching that heat index down in Monroe. The rest of us, for the most part, in the mid and upper 90s. Slightly cooler here in Pontiac in 92. Uh, and there's not much relief in the short term. We'll check that out in your seven day forecast. Storm pins, we uh, go out to Ray, Michigan. We got a little bit of fog over the soybeans this morning. Kind of a tranquil shot, but uh, really not uh, indicative of what was to come as far as that heat goes this afternoon. There's quite a few thunderstorms going on up north, but this is not going to be a problem for us, at least tonight. We're going to get chances in here tomorrow afternoon and especially on Thursday. And it looks like and then that's going to continue chances as we get into the upcoming weekend. So here's how things play out tonight. Mostly dry. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an evening shower or storm gets scared up. But tomorrow afternoon we'll start seeing a few of these probably less coverage than what the model is showing here. But nevertheless, there'll be some thunderstorms out there and then those chances are just going to be with us hit and miss as uh, we get through Thursday and even Friday and Saturday too before we start seeing a big change in our forecast going into the upcoming weekend. So tonight's low 74. That's as low as we're going to get. Plus with that humidity, very uncomfortable night tonight. And in your four zone forecast, we're going to look at heat index readings tomorrow. You thought today felt hot. It's going to be very similar tomorrow. Probably seeing triple digit heat index readings at some point in the metro zone tomorrow. In our south zone, very similar numbers down here near the state line. Blissfield, Morency, Lambertville, seeing some of our hottest numbers tomorrow. 99, 100 uh, in parts of the west zone. Chelsea, Manchester, Ann Arbor, some of our warmer numbers. And then those are just slightly cooler in the northern part of Genesee County. And not much relief even out here towards Lake Huron. 96 for that heat index in Lexington tomorrow. A lot of 97s and 98s elsewhere across that north zone. So here's your seven day forecast and you can see the temperatures start to drop as we get into Thursday and Friday, but the humidity is still with us. That's not really going to go away until we get past Saturday. That's also going to end our storm chances then as well. So we're going to finish the weekend on a pretty nice note. 75 degrees, low humidity and plenty of sunshine all in time to go back to school, but at least things are going to be a little bit more comfortable on Monday and we'll return to uh, thunderstorm chances on Tuesday, but at least we're going to get the hot stuff out of the way here in the next couple days. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. In good health. Summer may be over, but many of us still want to keep that beach body. So here is a look at one non surgical procedure that promises to zap the fat. What is the advantage of this procedure over any other fat burning procedure? Well, I think the number one advantage is it can cover this whole area in one sitting and then you combine it with this prolon, you know, fast. It's a tremendous advantage in terms of no downtime and no bruising. Why are you here today? 
Well, I'm trying to slim my abs up. So this is the area right here that you're thinking about? Yep, right here. Got it. This whole area. Is there a celebrity that you have in mind when you think about what you want to look post this <laughs> procedure? Well, I mean, Kate Hudson's body is rocking. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> she's definitely a good fitspo for me. Step one, all over treatment takes 45 minutes. We're gonna start with the first treatment. Great, this I is the vanquish. All right, let's bring it on. What we're gonna do is heat the fat cells up to 45 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature you need in order to actually kill the fat cells. Step two, love handles, about 15 minutes. What we're gonna use is Fractura Forma. This is gonna tighten the skin while killing a little additional fat. Step three, sides and stubborn areas, about 15 minutes. So now we're gonna use the body effects to help break up the cellulite to get those little fat molecules from inside the cellulite free. So overall, how was it? So easy. Okay. Yeah. Good. Step four, diet. All right, so that's it. So now step four is the fasting mimicking diet. It's just gonna be a low carb, low protein, high fat diet that's gonna stimulate your body. And that's it. You're gonna start seeing results over the next six weeks and then we'll have you back to see your final results. And you've gotta see the results after just six weeks. Now, usually multiple treatments are required to see those results. Four treatments with the Vanquish system will cost you about $2,000. Ahead first at four, a confused Ben Carson leaves a television a interview a because of a bag. Those today. moments filmed here in Detroit are going viral. And up next, an out-of-this-world tribute to a royally special singer who's being honored in space. Time now for our trending stories this afternoon. One of Freddie Mercury's bandmates to honor the rock legend with an out of this world birthday present. Smithsonian uh, Astrophysical Observatory has deemed it their duty and their pleasure to name an asteroid after Freddie. It will be called Asteroid Freddie Mercury. Oh, that's pretty cool, Ben. I bet you don't have an asteroid name no, after you. No, I don't. See? I could put that on my list. <laughs> Freddie Mercury's asteroid sits in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter and is more than two miles wide. Mercury, who did die back in 1991 from complications related to AIDS, he would have turned 70 years old on September 4th. Well, some Beyonce fans will have to wait a little longer to see her live. Beyonce was set to bring her formation world tour to New Jersey's MetLife Stadium tomorrow, but the singer who celebrated her 35th birthday on Sunday is now postponing that show after being put on vocal rest by her doctor. The concert will now happen next month, and there's no news on other changes to the singer's tour dates so far. But we'll keep suspicious. It did seem kind of strange that her birthday was one day, and then, the, you know. Yeah, but you know what? If she showed up and her voice was bad, people would be. No, then you'd want your money things. back anyway. Yeah. So, good point. Former Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson is, was being interviewed by CNN when he realized mid-interview he forgot his luggage. Learned a lot of things. What do you think he took oh, away from, from my, today? My luggage. <laughs> Um, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Looks like Dr. Carson is going to try and find his luggage and he'll be right back with us. He's actually back with us again. So well, it's unclear exactly, exactly where Carson luggage left his luggage, but he was able to find it quickly it. and then he returned to the interview like nothing ever happened. A Texas single mom didn't want her son to miss out on donuts with dad day at school, so she dressed up like a man. Yvette Vasquez has gone viral after she put on a mustache and hat to dress up as her son's father. Vasquez says she's gotten a lot of support from people online, even dads, and this might just be the beginning as her two younger sons actually want her to do the same thing when it's their turn for Donuts with Dad. Pretty cute there. Ahead first of four, we asked and you submitted. Stay close to see adorable first day of school pictures of local kids. We are sharing them next. Could your child be on TV in just a matter of moments? Stick around. Well, finally, first tip four, we have been asking you all week long, basically, for pictures of your kids on their first day of school because who doesn't love seeing those smiley faces on that first day? And you guys delivered. First, we've got this spiffy young man eager to get on his way this morning. Very handsome. Also, we've got a student from Hoban Elementary ready for his first day with his Matthew Stafford jersey. Also, this adorable little girl who apparently could not be happier that she's off to school. And then finally, there's our friend Neil with his team teacher right before his first day of the first grade. I've got to admit, I can't 
remember smiling on my first day of school. This I was excited. I was really, I was one of those who couldn't sleep the night before. I had my backpack ready. And your Mork and Mindy lunchbox. <laughs> that was a secret. Oh. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. First of four, we're back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next. You busted me. Sorry. <laughs>